here to make you another lovely recipe. Right, tonight I'm cooking for you. My mother's picked it. Um, I don't get a choice of what I cook anymore. It's got to be something my mother wants to eat. She's picked this thing. It's called lasagne. Lasagne. La lasagne. 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 It's an Italian dish. This is all the ingredients that we're going to use. We need butter, cheese, mushrooms, lasagne sheets, mustard, salt, pepper, minced beef, olive oil, onion, flour, garlic, chopped onions and some herby things and ginger. So let's get on with it. This is going to be really cool because I'm a professional cook. Okay, the first thing you have to do is put the oven on gas mark 3. I've done that, I've already done that, I'm, I'm prepared. Now I need to put the hob on. There. We're going to put some mince in, some minced beef. So, we get a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. I'm guessing that's a couple of tablespoons. Because I've seen the size of a spoon. And I know it's about that big, so two of them. Just mix that around a bit and throw your mince in. This is the mince I'm using today. 100% British beef. You can use it from other countries. It won't be as good. It won't be as good. But you can use it from any country, I suppose. Stick that in there. Right, and this is a serious tip for you, okay? When you're making mince, when you're browning mince beef, always keep chopping away at it because you get big round bits and I don't like that so I've got, an, I've got a choice of things I can use here what my mother's got now I don't want plastic because it melts that's just stupid having plastic ones I don't really want wood because it burns I don't really want metal because it scratches the pan someone needs to invent a different kind of material for cooking with but I'm going to use a, a flat a flat wooden one and you've got to get it all chopped up and spend a good couple of minutes until it's properly browned and all chopped up so you don't get big lumps in it because that's just gross. There's no need for big gross lumps. If, it, if you're going to have a big gross lump of meat you might as well leave it in a field and call it a, call it a cow. So I'll get on with this. Join me in a little while. So there you go, that's just about browned off now. As you can see, there's no lumps in there because I kept going like that and, and cr you know, there's not one single baby cow in there. It's all minced beef now. That's what it's supposed to be, minced beef. So no baby cows. Now that's browned, you can take it off the heat and we move on to the next step, which is onions. Let's go cut an onion. Right, you have to quickly just chop an onion roughly, it says. Now, these are the only two knives in the cupboard. Look at the size of that. It's not even, it won't go through the onion. That's useless. So I'm going to have to use a bread carving knife. All the others are in the dishwasher. They've gone to work. They want me to cook the meal for tomorrow, you know, through the night. And they don't even leave me with a knife. I'm not washing one up. So I'm using a bread knife. So you take the top off. You take the bottom off. You cut, it's alright because it does say you've got to cut it roughly and I can do that. Especially with that knife. Rip all outside your bits off. We don't want them. Throw them over there till Mick comes home in the morning and he can clean them up. And just cut your onion up roughly. So there's your roughly chopped onion. It's roughly enough for me anyway. So you just throw that in the pan. We're going to brown this off as well, you see. Or, or we're going to soften it, should I say. But before I do, I've just got to prepare some garlic. Now, I always thought garlic came in a jar, in little bits. My mum's given me them. What, what am I meant to do with them? Um, it says I need two cloves, so two of them, I suppose. So we're going to cut these up and throw these in with the onion and uh, brown them all, uh, soften them all off together. 
So that's the garlic done. A little tip for you, okay? My mother's got this. She told me it's for a garlic crusher. Yeah, looks okay, doesn't it? Very professional. You try getting one of them in there. It's impossible. What a stupid invention. Honestly, you're much better using a knife. Right, for the next stage you're going to need 150 um, milligrams of uh, stock, beef stock, okay? We get little cubes in England, we call them OXO cubes, so I'm going to use one of them. And someone gave me a tip the other day, um, basically because I, I've been struggling to measure liquids, okay? Somebody said, a hundred and, for example, 150 millilitres is the same as 150 grams. There you go. So, we're going to get 150 grams of water, just for, to make a stock up. There's five, ten. Hang on. Okay, that didn't work very well. So, I can't, I've just had to guess on the stock. Right, so all the onions are now soft, and they stink. This is your onion and garlic, and it stinks, I'm telling you. When your breath smells every morning, it's because you use these kind of onions. I suggest using different onions because they stink. Right, so that's your onion. It's soft now, so we can put the meat back in, okay? Lovely. The meat and the onion, all in there. Let's get it mixed together. Beautiful. And this is going to be the base, if you like, for your lasagna. No, no, no. Um, to that, we had 50 grams of flour, plain flour. Mix that up as well. Oh, it's looking a bit dry, isn't it? Don't worry, don't worry. Throw in 125 milli, 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 whatevers. 125 milli thingies of, uh, 125 million stocks. Whatever you want to call them. Um, throw them in there as well. And just leave that, let it come back up to the boil. Okay, one slight problem with this is it's not going to return to the boil because there's no liquid in it. Anyway, it's hot, it's hot, it'll do. Trust me. Right, we need one, one teaspoon of sugar. There you go, one teaspoon of sugar. You need three tables, two, te two three, three teas, two, three. You need some tomato puree. I haven't got any tomato puree. But my mum has got this stuff. It's sun-dried tomato by Dolmio stirring. So I'm going to use that instead. Throw that in there. Lovely jubbly. Um, one tablespoon, or is it one teaspoon? You need some thyme, okay? We haven't got any thyme, but we've got some Italian herbs, and it's got about 3% thyme in it. So you put some of that in. Just play it by ear, yeah? Well, no, don't play it by ear. Just put exactly the same amount in as I've put in because I'm a professional and I know what I'm doing. And then you add two cans of chopped tomatoes. Or maybe one. The problem is I'm not really going by the amounts it says in the recipe because uh, I'm not cooking as much as it says in the recipe. Now in the recipe it says two cans so I should really only use one but I don't want, the last thing I want is this to dry out. So I'm going to put two in there and trust me it will work out fine. Honestly I've made lasagna in here about five times in the last week. I make it every day. You can have it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, whenever you like. So, I'll just leave that to do whatever it wants to do for a bit. Okay, job's a good one. That's done. It's all bubbling away and lovely. Look at that. What we need to do is put that in an oven kind of dish thingy. Oh, there seems to be an awful lot there. Never mind, rather too much than too little. Put that in the oven on gas mark number three, which is under and something degrees, I don't know for one and a half hours or until the meat goes nice and soft and tender. Whilst that's cooking, um, I've got some white sauce to make. 
you know, I've done everything right so far until now. I forgot to say, you've got to put it in the oven covered up, okay? I haven't got a cover which goes over that pan. So I'm just going to use some foil, stick that over the top of it and leave it for an hour and a half. Okay, I made a big mistake. I made a big mistake. Can you remember the flour? The plain flour, the 50 grams of plain flour? Don't put it in with the mince and onions, that would just be stupid. It's best to use it for the next step, the white sauce. And if you're going to follow a recipe off the internet or something like that, make sure you read each stage correctly. It's very important. I learned this in science at school. You've got to make sure you read everything properly. So now we're going to move on to the white sauce. Let's just forget that there's flour in with the mince. It, it won't matter, I'm sure. I've made another little mistake. When I said put the 50 grams of white butter in your next part in the white sauce, that's correct, okay? But you do actually need some flour in with the mince, so it's not all wrong. You need two level tablespoons of uh, plain flour in with your mince, okay? So I. I've just put a little bit extra in. So now we need to make some uh, white sauce. So you get uh, your, your heat on, you put a pan on top. I've got all this prepared, honestly, this is going to be great. You get some butter. Oh, I forgot to tell you the amounts, didn't I? I think it's 50 grams of butter. You put that in there and you let it melt. Once your butter's melted, add 50 grams of plain flour. Just mix that together and leave it for one minute. Then we add one and a half, sorry, one and a quarter pints of milk, hot milk. But you do this gradually and you whisk it in as you're going along. Now I haven't got a whisk, mother, you haven't got a whisk. Um, so I'm having to use a fork. You've got to do this until it's thick. Now to be honest with you, it was much thicker before I put the milk in, but I'm just going to play along with it. And I'm going to get this entire one and a quarter milk in there. By the way, the, the milk has to be hot when you're putting it in, so I've, I've pre-boiled the milk. I did that there, just next to this one. There. Into there, we're going to add 50 grams of cheese. Now, it's best to use Parmesan cheese. My mother doesn't like Parmesan cheese. So, we're using, I don't know what kind of cheese it is, to be honest. It's cheese. Does it matter? We stick that in there as well. On top of that, two teaspoons of mustard. I can't remember what kind of mustard it said, but it certainly wasn't English mustard, because English mustard is incredibly hot. But it is the best in the world. I'm telling you that now. So, we we'll put that in. And then a very generous helping of pepper and salt. So there you have it. That is the finished white sauce. It's lovely and thick. It's quite lumpy, but I think that's just the cheese inside it. But that looks beautiful. I'm going to taste that in a minute. Wonderful. I'm just waiting for the meat in the oven now. All the rest is done, ready. Um, whilst we're waiting, uh, quite a few people say it'd be really funny if your mother walked in while you were cooking and sort of stay to the kitchen. I'll tell you something, my mother watches all my videos. She's nosy. She likes to watch them and criticise me afterwards. She won't eat any of the food I make until after she's watched the video to see what's gone inside it. So yeah, she does watch my videos. Hi mum. So yeah, let's just wait for this meat and then we're going to layer it. We're going to actually make the lasagna. 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 We're, we're going to make an Italian dish. Yes. Right, we're ready to go. We're ready to make the lasagna. Lasagna. So, what we do, I can't get everything in camera view, I'm sorry, so I'm just going to have to do a bit out of shot. We get some of his meat, 
which has been cooking for hours and hours and hours and we put a layer of it in the bottom of here a nice layer of that in there get it into all the corners nice on top of that we're going to put some of his white sauce, his white sauce, look, it's a bit lumpy but I'm sure that won't mind, that won't matter, surely not. I don't know how much you're meant to put on, because I've not made it before, well I have, I've made it hundreds of times, lasagna. So you stick a layer of that on, I think I've used a bit too much but never mind, stick a layer of that on. Then you get some salt and pepper on top. To season it. And then you put another layer on. It's all about layers, you see. Someone told me that the other day when I was photoshopping. It's all about layers. And it's exactly the same with the lasagna. Oh, no, 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 no. Right, what you don't want to do is what I've just done. What an idiot. You need some of these. I made these earlier. I made a big box of them. And you've got to put these on top before you put another layer on. Idiot. I don't know how thick or whatever. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just going to stick them on. I'm in a bad mood now because I got that bit wrong. My mum's going to kill me if it doesn't turn out right, I'm telling you. So that's that. I've put too much meat in bottom, way too much meat in bottom. I think I'm going to have to start again. Well, I completely mucked that up, didn't I? I'm, I layered it all wrong. I layered it completely wrong, so I've had to do it again. As you can see, the dish changes shape on your third layer. Um, I've run out of white sauce for the top. It's too high up. The dish isn't big enough. It's the wrong shape. This just ain't good. It ain't good. Right, you stick some cheese on top to disguise underneath so your mother can't tell. That's what I'd do. Just throw, just throw a load of cheese on it and just tell her that it's got white sauce under cheese. She won't know. So I'm going to coat this. And there you have it. There you have it. Professional job, well done, well disguised, Dan. She won't notice it's all mixed up at the bottom, look. It don't matter. It's still going to taste the same, isn't it? So, that goes in the oven. <coughs> Gas Mark 6, a preheated oven. Gas Mark 6, I think it was, uh, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For 45 minutes, or until golden brown and the pasta's nice and soft. Oh, by the way, you're meant to leave it for six, six hours. Six hours before you actually cook it now. Um, it depends what kind of pasta layers you use. Um, I've been assured by mother that uh, these don't need waiting for six hours. Because you've got to let get the pasta soft. So, it's in the oven. Join me when it's all ready and we'll, we'll try it together. The time has come. The time is here. For us to look at us lasagna in here. It's coming out of the oven. Whoa, baby. Look at the cheese on top of there. Look at the colour of that. Wow, it's bubbling away. Let's get this served up. Oh, what a crispy top it's got as well. Perfect. Now this is tomorrow night's tea, so it's going to be reheated anyway, but uh, so I'm only trying a little bit for now. Wonderful. I think the layers are going to be all wrong, to be honest, and maybe not enough pasta inside, but I think the taste is going to be fantastic. So there you have it. A uh, bit of garnish, some uh, grapefruit segments. And there you have it, guys. Deep digger down. With his lasagna in it. So let's taste it. Let's taste it together. Are you ready for this? Lasagna in it. Look at that. Wonderful. Wow. I can cook. I really can cook. I'm telling you. People keep saying, Dan, you're getting better at cooking, you know. I'm not getting better. I was just born a professional genius. 
I can cook, man. I can cook. I'm brilliant at cooking. There you go, guys. Deep fried down lasagna in here. Give it a go yourself. It's easy. You saw how easy it was for me. Just watch your layering bit. It's that that bit's not easy. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you all next time with another fantastic recipe. Come on, dig in.